I'm gonna lay down my burdens Down by the riverside Oh, down by the riverside Down by the riverside I'm gonna lay down my burdens Down by the riverside Ain't gonna study Down by the riverside Ain't gonna study war no more Ain't gonna study war no more Ain't gonna study war no more Ain't gonna study I'm gonna put on my golden shoes Down by the riverside Down by the riverside Oh, down by the riverside I'm gonna put on my golden shoes Down by the riverside And I ain't gonna stop Down by the riverside, down by the riverside, down by the riverside, gonna put on my long white robe. Down by the riverside, ain't gonna study war. Well, I welcome you to this uh, time.
time of worship at St. John's Episcopal Church on this, the eighth Sunday after Pentecost in Proper 12. Um, that was uh, down by the riverside done by Darren and Karen McCarty for us this morning. Our opening hymn is hymn 388. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 5. Worship, oh worship the King. <coughs> Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Gloria this morning comes from a Taze tune that was probably familiar to you. Without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. 
Increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The reading for this morning is from 1 Kings. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, you have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father, David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, although I am only a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil, for who can govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this, God said to him, because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you and no one like you shall arise after you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 119, verses 129 through 136, on page 774 in the Book of Common Prayer. We'll read this together in unison. Your decrees are wonderful, therefore I obey them with all my heart. When your word goes forth, it gives light, it gives understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pant, I long for your commandments. Turn to me in mercy, as you always do to those who love your name. Steady my footsteps in your word. Let no iniquity have dominion over me. Rescue me from those who oppress me, and I will keep your commandments. Let your countenance shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. My eyes shed streams of tears because people do not keep your law. Second lesson this morning is a reading from Romans. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own Son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our 
hymn before the gospel this morning is 488 with verses 1 and 2 before the reading, verse 3 following. Jesus put before the crowds. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. So quiet the noise of our lives that we can hear your voice in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, there are times and crises that are just way too big for us to be able to handle on our own. 
I think of those times in our lives when someone has hurt us deeply, perhaps committed an offense against us that really affected us to our core. Or those times when uh, we are diagnosed with cancer or disease or other major health issues. Those times when we have the loss of a family member. Or the crisis we're living in now with this virus. As, even as I sit here this morning, I, it's still, after all these months, hard to believe that we are in this congregation that has just a handful of people in it and everybody else is worshiping at home online. Or that we're going through these unbelievable divisions in our country and great divisions of uncertainty. And Paul, in this passage to the Romans in this particular chapter here, he calls this weakness, our weaknesses. Not many people, at times men, like to admit that we have a weakness. I mean, let's be honest, who really likes to ask for directions? Or admitting that we are wrong? Asking or even accepting help from friends and loved ones when we are in a difficult time. I know that for many of us, it's a struggle. It's a struggle to accept that kind of help. And I also know that uh, most all of us are struggling and going through a time of weakness in response to all of these current circumstances. Well, in addressing Romans, Paul is speaking to the power of the Holy Spirit. I love this. He tells how the Holy Spirit intercedes and helps us in the midst of our weakness, especially in those times of prayer, especially when we are unsure of what it is that we should pray for. And even without knowing it, I love that, the Holy Spirit is interceding for us. And since the Holy Spirit knows our hearts and knows um, all the desires of us, the Holy Spirit is able to present these to God in a way that is even better than we could on our own. Well, I think the struggle in terms of what to pray is, is more uh, common than perhaps we remember at times. All of us have times where we're struggling in this world, and some of those that I've just heard in the last couple of weeks there are, there are uh, women who struggle to have children and they look around and they see um, so many others not struggle. Even those who um, have addictions in life and, and have uh, CPS coming in and yet those ladies are still able to have children and it creates issues. Young adults struggle to find a major or a career or a partner in life. People who have been healthy their whole life suddenly stricken with deadly cancer. There is anger and there is grief. And in the midst of all that, we wonder how to pray. And we wonder, is it okay to tell God how angry we are? And Paul encourages us, encourages us in those most weak times, the Holy Spirit is helping you. The Holy Spirit is interceding and praying for us. It all reminds us, or it might remind us, of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. If you remember, he's praying, and he's praying the desires of his heart. He's really doing this, saying, Lord, I know that the crucifixion is coming. I know what's about to happen. And he says, but if possible, let this cup pass from me. But I love how he ends that prayer. He says, but not my will, your will be done. And truly, God's will was accomplished. And part of that accomplishment is what is referred to in this second paragraph. And that is what it explains. It uses this weird word in there, predestined. And when it makes some of us in the Episcopal world um, uncomfortable. But here's one of the things that he is saying by predestined. He's saying in this case that God's will is that all people, not just a few, but all people are predestined to be made into the image of Jesus. And because God's will is that we are all called into that image, then he says the called, that's all of us, God makes righteous or God makes 
uh, justifies, right? God makes us in a right relationship with God. And then when we are made righteous after passing from this life, then we are glorified. We are made perfectly holy in heaven. All because of what Jesus did on the cross and in the resurrection. So in saying all that, what he's saying is only in our weaknesses and that ability of God to step in in the midst of our struggles do we see God's strength being shown. God's power to save all people is revealed. And God's ability to renew the life of each person and all of creation. It reminds me of the many times when in the midst of our difficulties, we're doing everything we can to make it work, right? We're doing everything we can to remedy the situation. And finally, we sigh. We give up and we say, Lord, I can't do it on my own. And it is at that point that God steps in and suddenly that which we didn't think possible or that remedy which we were hoping for suddenly comes to light. Healing, transformation, answers come and there is hope. This interceding of the Holy Spirit and God's will are so powerful that Paul says nothing can prevent God's power or prevent the power of God's love in Jesus Christ. I think of our world, no violence, right? No virus, no racism, no anger, no hatefulness, no evil. So in the midst of this time, let us offer up to God our lives and our world and our hearts. Being honest since the Holy Spirit's well aware of what's going on in all that resides within our hearts and our minds and let us watch as God's power is made manifest in this world by this interceding Holy Spirit. Just this week I've had the opportunity to uh, visit with quite a few people and here are the things that I heard people saying Holy Spirit intercede for me, help me, bring about healing and salvation and the death of a family member. Help us to come together as one people and make us see that we are one body. Heal our bodies and their brokenness. Transform our hearts, especially in relationship with our neighbor, as we like to say here, our cousins. Heal us of this awful virus. Heal our racial prejudices our prejudices that are social and economic, religious and political, help us in our weakness. If we're being honest, then I would have to say today, we're all feeling the weight of our weakness. It's simply too much to carry. And there is no need to try to carry it on our own, so let us lift it up continually to God. And let us Allow the Holy Spirit to intercede for us and let us see God's power made manifest in our lives. Amen. Our service continues with the words of the Nicene Creed, which is on page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer or in your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, 
and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. The prayers of the people can be found on page 388 of the Book of Common Prayer or page 6 of your bulletin. Let us pray for the church and the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember especially this day, Amy Rodenberg. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor, that we may experience God's infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins for our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us share the peace of God with those nearest you. And if there isn't anyone near you, then uh, reach out and touch someone with phone or email and let them know that you are thinking of them.
Well, again, I welcome you to this uh, worship here at St. John's Episcopal Church. Um, if you are a guest with us this day, we do ask you to go and look at uh, uh, the church on our website, stjohnsnb.com, and uh, follow along, look around our website, and let us know that you are interested in this church. Um, you can't see them now, but the flowers right here behind me are uh, designed and created by Nolan Hagee, and they're given in gratitude and thanksgiving for Carol Linker, Janet, and the Prayer Shawl Ministry. Give thanks for that. Also, you can see on the table, there is a rose for Jim and Joanne, had a, their first grandchild, um, Everett, was born, and uh, we give thanks. He was born on Saturday, July 18th, and so uh, mom and baby and everybody are happy and healthy, and so we give thanks for that great blessing. Uh, we do have uh, yard signs that let uh, people here know that they are loved and missed, and if you would like to uh, take one of those to someone who uh, may not be able to get out, we encourage you to contact Jenny at the office and to take those and there are also the new forward day by days that are available at the office as well today under nurture it's the last class led by adrian and so that's at 10 on zoom and then starting next week uh reverend lucy and i are going to put together a class it's called becoming beloved community it is put out by the episcopal church and it is going to be on Zoom, and the invite is in our e-news, so please do look for that invite. And we invite you all to come and grow in our understanding of actions that will guide us towards healing in our hurting country, and that is the, the focus of that class. Uh, under children and youth, just a reminder that devotions are recorded for the youth on Sundays, and today is the Camp Outreach Project drop-off. And so uh, please look in your e-news if you need to do that as well. All right, I'm going to grab my mask and I'm going to invite Paul Anthony to come up. So give us just a moment. No, you don't need it. Just invite you to come. So uh, Paul was our reader today because today is Paul's uh, last Sunday and he stands here in uh, representation for Jen and Jocelyn and Grace and Haven. And uh, they are moving to Tallahassee, Florida, where they will be um, part of Florida State University's program. He's going to study uh, or get a doctorate in American religious history. And so uh, we... Um, I'm gonna pray for him, but one of the things that I love about church is when new people and families come in, and then one of the things that breaks my heart is when they move. But in this particular case, as sad as I am for us, I'm so happy for Paul to take this step in his uh, education and to move uh, in a new direction in life, and in some ways he blames it on me. So uh, anyway, I, I just love this family, and so we're gonna pray for them as they, um, Get ready to move to Florida. Lord, we just give you thanks for Paul and Jen and Jocelyn and Grace and Haven. And just thank you for the blessing that they have been to St. John's. Just for their love of you, their faithfulness, their leadership, and just the joy that they have brought to this congregation. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to provide for them as you are the great provider. And continue to watch over them and look over them and... Uh, bless them in this move i pray you help them to find another great community of faith in which to live and to serve and to worship you lord and uh, i pray that uh, now this is the desire of my heart and i'm asking the holy spirit to intercede but i pray that one day they come back this way so that we can all be together again all these things we pray in christ's name amen anything you want to say no. Thank you to everybody who has been a wonderful four years at St. John's. We'll definitely be back to visit, if nothing else. So. Oh, excellent. Look forward to seeing you. Love you, Paul. Love you all, too. All right. Let us pray for birthdays and one anniversary. So our birthdays are for Alan, Bobby, and Ginger. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand, comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful, 
Raise them up when they fall, and in their heart, may your peace, which passes all understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And our anniversary is Peter and Liz. Grant, O God, in your compassion that this couple have in taking each other in marriage and affirming again the covenant which they have made, that they may continue to grow in forgiveness, loyalty, and love, and come at last to the eternal joys which you have promised through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom, and you are exalted as head over all. continue as we offer up a portion of our time, our talent, and our treasure to God as we sing the doxology. <laughs>
Prayer C, found on page 369 of the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. God of power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxy suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile Earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation. But we turned against you and betrayed your trust and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us. By his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim them, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit. Now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit. Be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, your Church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed it be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for us, the people of God. 
Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And together let us pray our act of reception prayer. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. that I have in this life of being a priest is that I make mistakes constantly. I'm uh, pretty weak. And uh, anyway, at the end of communion, one of the things that I wanted to explain to you is that at this point I'm doing communion and, and celebrating and Lucy's not because at this point she is a deacon and then when she is ordained as a priest, she'll do it. But one of the, the roles of a deacon is they set the table and then they clean the table and uh, in just a minute ago, I did all that, and, and I had to apologize, and I wasn't even thinking about it. I've done it so many times by myself. Anyway, just to give you that explanation of what goes on in the life of the church and in our uh, new life and celebration of having Reverend Lucy with us. We continue with our prayer of thanksgiving. It's on page 366 in the Book of Common Prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. 
To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Christ be in our head and in our understanding. Christ be in our eyes and in our looking. Christ be in our mouth and in our speaking. Christ be in our heart and in our living. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you now and evermore. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn 524. We'll sing verse 1, 4, and 5. I love thy kingdom, Lord. safe out there.